Chapter 7. Four little sailor boys going out to sea. A red herring swallowed one, and then there were three. Four bodies upstairs, two down. Can't be very hygienic. Still with us, Nerecot? Solidamide isn't much of a poison, if you ask me. Although your face is all flushed. I found the antidote. Thank heavens! The weather is moderating. Might be a chance for a bonfire on Ship's Rock. Can you give an account of your movements? I followed you and Lombard almost to the top of the stairs. I heard someone below me breathing in the dark. So I stays as still as a church mouse. Then I hear stealthy steps heading down the stairs. This stands investigating, I think. So I creep as carefully as I can back down. I step closer and saw the doctor bending over Wargrave. Did you see the gun anywhere? No, but I smelled the cordite from it in the air. One thing I don't understand, that wig on the judge's head. Where did that come from? Someone borrowed Miss Brent's grey yarn. She told me it was missing. She was extremely perturbed. Something finally broke through that icy shell of hers, eh? I didn't think it was possible. Owen certainly thinks ahead. Who arrived in the dining room after you? Lombard, practically on my heels. Then a few seconds later, Miss Claythorne opened the kitchen door. I found that peculiar. You said you knew something about the history of this island. It was bought by that sailing chap, Elmer Robson. But his wife got seasick, poor dear. Loved the bird watching, but not the boating. An American film star named Gabrielle Steele bought it from them after some scandal or other back in the States. She stuck it out for a couple of years, but must have missed the glamour and excitement of Hollywood because she packed it in. Next, the Admiralty was rumoured to have taken it over for some super secret stuff I could never get a line on. The thing that puzzled me was that I found no record of anybody named Owen buying the place. I was going to get on to his solicitor, Archibald Morris, before coming, but he died last week. Died? What was the cause? Still under investigation, but it sounded like poison to me. That is all for now, Mr. Bloor. Cause of death was a bullet? Yes, directly in the center of his forehead. Never had a chance. Can you give an account of your movements? When we heard Miss Claythorne scream, I naturally went with the rest to investigate. I thought the judge was right behind me. I stood there for a moment, wondering whether I should go up or down. While I was there, I heard the shot. I made my way back to the dining room. He was quite dead. Did you see the gun? No. Who arrived in the dining room after you? Mr. Bloor, I believe. Yes, then Lombard, and finally Miss Claythorne. From the kitchen. I didn't understand that. That is all for now, Dr. Armstrong. What happened after you went upstairs? I went to my room, opened the door. A gust of wind blew my candle out. I tried to move toward the French doors to close them when... It felt like a hand on my face. Cold, clammy, smelling of the sea. I thought of Cyril, floating down through the green depths. Oh, Vera. I screamed and ran, stumbling in the dark. I found myself at the service hallway, heard running behind me and rushed in there. Then I made my way down the back stairs every time there was a flash of lightning. There was a shot while I was on the stairs. I went through the kitchen to the dining room. I was the last to arrive. The clammy hand was seaweed hanging from a line. I had a look inside after we... Uh, made the judge comfortable. Just a length of seaweed. Well, whoever strung it up, combined with the generator failing, made a neat diversion designed to separate us. Did you see the gun anywhere? No, I'm sorry. Can you give an account of your movements? Just for the record, Wargrave was the one so keen on you playing detective, not me. It didn't turn out so well for him, did it? You won't answer my questions. I didn't say that. Just thought it worth pointing out. My movements? I ran up the stairs behind you and, well, I ducked into the bathroom at the top. The one Armstrong and the judge share. Uh, share. Curious behavior. It occurred to me that Vera's scream was meant to be a diversion. I wanted to see what everyone would do. In the lightning flashes, I saw Bloor head back down the stairs. Narakop was along the hall there. So I went downstairs to the dining room, arriving behind Bloor. 
Did you see the gun anywhere? I saw it in a flash of lightning and scooped it up. I didn't know what had happened then. I realize now you have only my word that I picked it up after the murder. I think you'd better hand that over. I think you'd better not try to take it away from me again. Who arrived in the dining room after you? Vera appeared in the kitchen doorway a few moments later. Are you sure you recognized Owen's voice? All right, Narricott, I'll tell you. I was hired by Archibald Morris, the non-existent Mr. Owen's attorney. He first made contact with me over the telephone. With Morris's voice on that recording, I'd swear to it. Thank you, Lombard. Five left, and we don't know which. I know. I haven't the least doubt. I suppose I do know, really. I think I've got a pretty good idea now. I haven't a clue. I don't know about the rest of you lot, but I'm going to go to my room and lock myself in until daylight. Sound plan. I agree. But Patrick doesn't have a room. Plenty of them about, if he doesn't mind sharing. Five bullets are plenty. Oh, Hugo. I'm so sorry. Self-righteous, smug old hypocrite. Letting Narricot play his detective games with a real professional on the case. He got no more than he deserved. upstairs just now? No. One of them's out of his or her room. Whoever it was went out the front door. I'll follow. Find out who's missing. That's our killer. I need to check everyone's room and find out who's missing. Wargrave's body is missing. Interesting development. One I'd better keep to myself for the moment. It's Nerecott. Someone has left the house. Law's following whoever it is. Well, it isn't me. Who is it? What's the matter? It's Patrick. Law heard someone. They ran outside. I'm checking to see who's still here. Three little sailor boys. Damnation!
payback. Philip gave me his gun. It's me, Patrick. Where did he go? He wanted me to tell you. Since the wind dropped, he was going to try and light the bonfire. That's a good idea, but he shouldn't try it alone. Then go help him. I'll be safe locked in here with his gun. The cliff is surely the highest point on the island. That's quite a signal fire. Someone should be able to see it. Any sign of Armstrong? He's vanished clean off the island. Vanished, that's the word. Like some damned conjuring trick. He must be somewhere. No, he isn't. We searched the house too. You must have heard us. He's gone. Clean vanished, scarpered. Thank you, Lombard. Did you stay in your room the entire time? Yes, I'm not a complete fool. Did you hear or see anything? Nothing after I told you where Philip had gone, until just now when he and Mr. Bloor returned. Much obliged for your assistance, Miss Glaythorne. Did you find Armstrong? No, he's disappeared. We searched everywhere. Have you and Lombard been together all this time? Yes, I found him up on Ship Rock. That is all for now, Mr. Bloor. What did you do before Bloor found you? crept along the balcony to Vera's window and gave her my gun. Very generous. Then I went up onto Ship Rock. I set the bonfire ablaze, but someone will have to keep an eye on it throughout the night. That'll be all, Mr. Lombard. Have you looked in the dining room? Yes. What is it? What is it now? Only three sailor boys are left. <laughs> 